Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery. It's a beautiful Friday morning, August 4th, 2023. We get together with our distribution partners and now our clients most weekday mornings at this time, 8 o'clock Central, to talk about strategies, tips, techniques, share success stories, provide any updates as needed, and, and support each of you. Well, we have a significant, significant update to share with you today. And I sent this to each of you. You should have received the agenda prior to. And the topic today is liquidation 2.0. And rather it's a strength or a weakness of, a weakness of mine, I like to step back and, and describe the context of our topic before we dig right in. Some of you have been with us for a while, some not. Some of you have been active, some not so much. So let's start with a little bit of a backdrop to make sure that the content today is relevant. So as you should know, through the credit and funding program, we make an explicit written guarantee. We're gonna help any client that goes through and participates, of course, raise at least $100,000. This is probably the most challenged aspect of what we do. It's like, how can you guys make a $100,000 guarantee? This is so controversial that the Federal Trade Commission came to us. And if you've ever talked to attorneys from the Federal Trade Commission, you understand while they're very smart, they're not the friendliest people. And so we were able to demonstrate at the highest level that yes, this is legal, this is ethical, this is allowed, we actually do this. And we do actually do it. So the credit and funding program is legal. I mean, it, it's it's proven at the highest level to be legal and effective. So we yes, we can help anyone qualify for at least a hundred thousand. Now, if you were to just stop with that statement, you could come to the conclusion: Well, I, I don't believe it. That sounds too good to be true. But you have to understand what we do. And once you understand what we do, it's like, ah, the light bulb goes off. Makes sense. So the way that we do it, we'll get to the what in a second. But the way that we do it is we work with branch offices. Many of you are running branch offices. We started rolling out and our goal is to have 100 branch offices. These are private labeled models where the branches go out to the marketplace under their own umbrella, under their own branding. The branches are providing incredibly high customer service, and that's what we, that's what customers deserve. And so then we provide the scope of services behind the scenes. So the result is it's a very profitable business for you as, as a branch owner. But let's get back to this whole statement here of how, again, are we promising 100000 Because that, that just sounds like a scam. That can't be. That sounds too good to be true. Well, let's get to the, the why that it's not too good to be true, the what of what we exactly do. So while it is an impressive promise, a feat, a, a commitment to help anyone raise at least $100,000, it's not a mystery. It's not too good to be true. It's only through a lack of familiarity or a lack of financial literacy that once you understand the model that you could contest it, once you understand it, just like the attorneys from the Federal Trade Commission, once they understood it, they said, oh, you're right, it's compliant. So this is possible because we do what? We improve the credibility of the participant. This isn't some pie in the sky, you know, send us some money and we'll give you the winning lottery ticket for this coming Saturday. That's nonsense. That's not what we're doing. What we're specifically doing is improving each participant's three C's. We're helping them improve their credit. We're helping them improve their collateral. And we're helping them improve their capacity. That's what's called in the financial industry, the three C's. So let's break that down just a little bit deeper so we're clear on it. Well, how can you guys improve people's credit? That, that sounds too good to be true. Well, that's a statement of the financially illiterate, right? We all know that credit is fluid and credit has no memory. So what does it take to have a strong credit score, a good credit profile? It would be defined as the absence of negative 
and the presence of positive. So negative means when we've not done what we promised to do, and the positive means we have paid as agreed. So what do we do? We legally remove applicable negative items for free. How much? For free through the credit suite, and we help them with credit boost, adding new trade lines. It's like, okay, well, you got me there, right? That makes sense. There, there's no refuting that. There's no refuting that. Then we move on to the next C. Well, how are you guys going to help with collateral? That, that sounds too good to be true. That, that, that must be a scam. Well, that's crazy talk. Collateral are the assets that an individual and or a business has that can be pledged as, a, as collateral to, to the lender that in case the borrower should not pay as agreed that the lender has some way to mitigate the risk, right? When you buy a house, the house is collateral, right? There's a, there's a mortgage on the house. When you buy a car, the car is collateral. There's a lien on, on the car title. So, what we're doing is literally transferring assets to each participant. Oh, well, how much does that cost? It's free. We transfer assets to every participant in the credit and funding program for free. So they have collateral to pledge for the loan. Okay, so again, we'll role play the skeptic. Well, that's got to be a scam. That can't be. What, what, what kind of assets could you give people? Well, we give them receivables, accounts receivables. Those are real assets. If you've taken Accounting 101, you understand accounts receivables are not only assets, they're categorized, categorized as current assets in the balance sheet. So now we're like, oh shit, man, they, they're onto something, right? I didn't think that they could do this. I didn't think credit could, could be improved, but now I see it can. And I, I didn't know that collateral shortfalls can be resolved. I, I guess they've got that figured out. So what are we left with? The third C, capacity. Well, I got you there, guys. There's no way you can help people improve their capacity. Well, that's wrong. We help clients expand their capacity. First of all, making sure that they have the documented cash flow. For most types of capital, most types of loans or funding, to no surprise, the lender wants to look to see if you can afford to pay it back. We just had a great training yesterday on our SBA program, which falls under credit and funding. Now, with changes at the federal level for SBA loans, we can prove capacity based upon future projections. Now, we don't even have to show historical earnings. But... In general, what we're doing is not only helping them with the documented cash flow, but also then we help them liquidate the receivables. Remember these receivables we just talked about. So we're transferring receivables that provides the collateral, and then we help liquidate, which gets to our point today, to turn that into cash, increase cash flow. So just a, a little bit more of a disclaimer on that. So we provide at no cost, how much? No cost, how much? No cost, real accounts receivables to credit and funding participants. These are real assets that are placed on the participants' financials and can be liquidated into cash. What would any business owner wanna do with receivables? You wanna turn it into cash, right? You and I could go mow someone's yard and we leave them a little piece of paper to say, pay us $20. That's an example at the most simplistic level of an accounts receivable. Well, do you and I go celebrate because we gave them this little piece of paper for a receivable? No, we want the, the, the homeowner to pay us our damn $20. So we want to turn AR into cash. So we provide real accounts receivables for free to credit and funding participants. And then if they want, not required, if they want, they can get additional receivables. We call that our collateral support program. And you can make money off the collateral support program. Not our point today, but uh, we've had separate training on that that will further supplement their collateral and cash flow. So again, if you go into this objective, you'll realize you and I are really on a gold mine, right? Because you and I can literally, legally, effectively, in a proven system, take anyone and help them raise at least 100000 and as a branch, you determine how much you want to be paid for that, right? There's the refundable setup fee on the front end, which can be financed. You decide how much you want to charge them. Most of you are charging $2,000 to $2,500. Uh, we got Brian, who just came on 
yesterday or the day before, he's charging $3,500. Uh, Oscar, who's not on the training this morning, I think he's charging $5,000, but it's up to you. So you're controlling the pricing for clients to get this value proposition that we do the work on. You interface with the clients, we do the work. And then the second trigger for economic rewards to you as the branch is the performance fee paid afterwards, after the client has raised their capital. By default, that performance fee is normally 10%. So for every 100,000 they raise, the client pays you 10,000 afterwards. Some of you are increasing that. Brian, again, from yesterday, he's setting his performance fee at 50%. But again, up to each of you. You could keep it at the 10, you could go lower, you could go higher, you could be very aggressive like Brian. You might wonder, how does Brian justify a 50% performance fee? This guy's Mensa smart. He's providing so much quality and, 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 and resources to his clients, he can justify it and he believes his clients will pay for it. But regardless, the basic is a, a, a $2,000 refundable deposit, 10% performance fee. All right, so now we understand that part, hopefully. Let's talk about converting receivables into cash, which is our, uh, our topic today. So today's discussion is to introduce liquidation 2.0. This is an optional offering, optional, optional, right? So we're talking about credit and funding clients. This is optional. And this is how we can assist them in liquidating the receivables for what they've received. So again, when they enroll in the credit and funding program, they get what? They get free receivables. Also, they may want to get more receivables for more collateral and more cash flow. That's done through the collateral support program. So what we're talking about now is liquidation 2.0, which is describing how we can help them if they want us to. We don't have to do this. They don't have to have us do this to convert those receivables into cash. So liquidation 2.0 provides credit and funding participants an aggressive turnkey solution for liquidating receivables. Credit and funding participants have the option, and as we said, not required, to assign their debt portfolio, in other words, the, the assets, the receivables they receive, and will provide the following services. And there's no time and no effort to the client. So in other words, it's outsourced. We take care of it for them. So this is different than it was before. Before we called it liquidation, just 1.0 or just liquidation. Now it's evolved. This is a new iteration as of today, rolling out today as of August 4th. It's better now than it was before. And that's true with software and most things in life, right? The first iteration of something you learn from and then you make it better. Well, here we are on 2.0. So let's discuss, which is the topic today, what's in liquidation 2.0, which is an optional service for the credit and funding clients. The first thing that we do is an invoice revision. It's like, what the hell does that mean? Okay, so let's go back to the receivables, right? So we have these receivables that the credit and funding client has received. They're, they're owed money from the debt tour, D-E-B-T-O-R, the debt tour owes the credit and funding participant money. So the first thing we're going to do, if, if they outsource this to us through to, uh, liquidation 2.0, is we're going to create a new invoice and send that to the debtor. And you might say, well, why? Well, first, we need to put them on alert that, that they owe money. We need to ask them to pay because amazingly enough, some people, you ask them to pay a debt that they owe and they'll pay it. But what happens, the, the revision part means that we're revising the invoice to reflect all legally allowed expenses referenced in the underlying contract, it's things such as late fees. Most of these contracts have a $50 a day late fee. So let's say that they're a month late in paying. Well, 50 times 30 days in a month, that's an extra $1,500 that's owed. Well, if they're three months behind, that's an extra 4,500, just using round numbers. And then most of the agreements have a, a clause that the debt tour, not our clients. Now, our clients are the winners here, so don't get confused. 
the your my clients are getting the money the debtors are paying the money and so also we can build in the anticipated collection cost because what i started to say is most of these agreements have a provision that the debtor must not only pay the late fees but also cover the collection cost thus this inflates legally and ethically the invoice owed so while we might have transferred, let's just say, a $10,000 receivable to the credit and funding client, once that invoice is revised legally and appropriately, it might be a $20,000 invoice. So it's gone up. So that's good, right, for the credit and funding client. They're owed more than what they originally thought or expected. We will also always include a copy of the breached agreement to the debt tour when they are invoiced. That's a part of our, our new policy of, of 2.0. So that way, when the debt tour is receiving the invoice for, let's just say, $20,000, they can't say, oh, that's not mine or prove it. We've already proven it. We will attach in every instance the underlying media, the underlying agreement. So it's validated from the get-go. Make sense? So that's the first thing that we do in liquidation 2.0. The second is we're going to send a demand letter to each debtor. This is the formal alert that announces that they better pay or at least set up a payment plan or bad things are going to happen. And when I say that, I don't mean that mean or illegal or inappropriate, just saying, okay, you owe this money. If you don't pay, it's going to report on your credit and we're going to sue you. And we're not bluffing. We are going to report it on your credit and we are going to sue you. So you can imagine, you know, for some people just getting the invoice, they're like, oh, shit, I'd rather pay than have problems. And then this is the second touch that may, in fact, encourage the person to go ahead because they don't want the negative credit reporting or they don't want to end up in court. So, again, all of this is good for you and me. This is all good for our clients. We're talking about how we're helping the clients, the credit and funding clients, collect the money that's legally owed to them by the debt tours from the receivables that we gave them for free or they acquired through the collateral support program. Third is derogatory credit reporting. Again, this is new for 2.0. This wasn't available in 1.0. So the unpaid debt will be reported if applicable, based upon the underlying agreement on the debtor's personal and business credit profiles. Well, you're going to have some people that care about their credit, and so that'll be very motivating for them to resolve the debt. So that's good for your and my client, the, the, the credit and funding client. Some may not worry about their credit and say, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll just get rid of it. I'll, I'll use credit repair. This will never, 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 never be removed through credit repair. The approach that we have and the amount of documentation and the amount of resources that we'll put to validate the debt and to respond to disputes, I promise you, there's not any credit repair system in the world that would get this off. It won't happen. Because why most people can be successful with credit repair is they find some glitch or the other party doesn't want to respond. It's not worth their while. We have a commitment of 100% commitment. We'll, we'll go to our deathbed keeping this on the credit report until it's paid for. And then third, a fourth one, I'm sorry, is litigation. So litigation is where we're actually filing a lawsuit against the debtor. Now, this is where it gets different. We're going to start under 2.0. We are no longer going to file lawsuits in small claims courts. We're going to file either in district courts or federal courts. Those are a more professional environment. They're more stable. The judges actually have law degrees. You, you might be amazed the background of some of the judges that are in what's called JP courts or small claims. That has proven to be unreliable and unpredictable. And in fact, we have a complaint in to the Judicial Oversight Committee of the way that um, the local court is running. So uh, we're, we're gonna file it through a higher level court. The good thing for you, for the client is, 
while certainly you could argue that someone could go represent themselves in small claims courts, it's very unlikely that they're going to want to represent themselves at a higher level court. Therefore, the debtor either needs to not fight it and just lose, which uh, 80 to 90 percent of the people just default on and don't, they don't even contest it. But, but those that want to fight it, they're going to have to most likely hire an attorney and incur a lot of cost. Well, why bother doing that? It's, it's their debt, right? We, we validated the debt already. Instead of them spending money on an attorney to fight a, a no-win situation, they'd be better off to pay the client so the client receives the money. Our litigation team will handle the entire legal process, so this does not push any burden back to the client. So the petition, which is the, the, the court document that's filed with the courts to initiate the lawsuit, the actual filing, going through discovery, litigating trial, in most cases never get to trial. Like I mentioned, 80 to 90 percent of them, uh, the people don't even respond, so it's a default judgment. So as mentioned in the note, this is a hands-off process for the credit and funding participant. Now, if they want to use liquidation 2.0, eyes wide open, we split the receipts from it 50-50. So, you know, we're providing this scope of services, but now the, the rewards are split 50-50. And so if they don't like that, they don't have to accept it. Uh, we have a, a branch manager I was talking to, or branch owner I was talking to yesterday, and he's using his own attorney or law firm, whatever it is, I don't know, for this process, not work, not having us as the outsourced provider, which is fine. Doesn't matter to us. But we under this model, we do all the, the work. So wrapping it up today, next steps. If you have any clients that have signed up for credit and funding or the collateral support program, and if they need help liquidating their receivables, uh, get with us so we can help them do that through 2.0. So as of today, Friday, August 4th, we are moving forward only with 2.0, no longer 1.0. 2.0 has been described here. So what have we done today? We've described what it is that, that we, you and I, do through the credit and funding program. We validated that it's proven it's legal effective. We've talked about the concept of moving receivables into cash, and we provided you very transparent details on what is included in that scope of services. We've also described that there's a 50-50 split of the receipts. Now, uh, Timothy's making a point, which is right, is that with this invoice revision, the invoice has gone up, so the pie is bigger, you know, as they would say. So uh, what happens is the client is actually getting more money than expected because the invoice has gone up because of incorporating these other costs. All right, anyone have any questions on this? So again, this is not your burden, but as a branch, you have clients, you know they're going to get free assets. They automatically get the, the free portfolio. So what you need to know is if the client, your client, the credit and funding client wants us to liquidate it for them, we can do so. And now you understand how liquidation 2.0 works. Any questions, comments, concerns before we, we end today's training? Of course, we'll be back Monday morning. Next week, we'll only have training, ironically, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Due to travel Tuesday and Thursday, we won't have trainings next week. It'll be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but we'll be back Monday. All right, uh, Al says, probably the best presentation he's had in his life. Well, thank you, Al. That was very generous of you. But we're working hard to do what we promised to do and create value for you and the client. And so this is, is how it works. If you have other detailed questions, of course, let us know. Hopefully this was helpful. Have a great day, and uh, we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.